Hi, and welcome to I Don't Work Here, Lady, where we'll see three very different stories, the first one being quite shocking. So to not give anything away, let's begin right now. Background. I'm a plumber, and I'm only 18. I went to a trade school for high school and came out with a full-time job as an apprentice. I was working in a four-story building inside the city, and there's only one elevator which we weren't allowed to use because of the companies that worked in the building itself. And then only one spiral square staircase. My journeyman and I were wrapping up our day and packing up everything. As the younger guy, I was sweeping and taking the loads back down to the truck to get ready to leave. And on one of my last trips, I was only taking a trash bag and a few of the hand tools I hadn't grabbed yet. I'm in my normal work clothes, but my boss isn't strict about wearing company clothing, so I'm only wearing my Dickies pants and a beat up sweatshirt with no labels. I start walking down the stairs with the trash from the fourth floor to the bottom when a worker, networking slash caller helpline company, from the third floor walked out with a trash bag. I briefly walked past just finishing my day when she scoffed at me. Me, being the kid I am, turn around and say, I'm sorry, I didn't see you there. I didn't mean to bump into you. And continued down, and then she said, Here, take this shit. I got a call I need to get on. I said that I was sorry and I didn't work for the building and it's not my job to take it. So she then exclaims, You're dressed as a janitor. My son is one too. You dress just like him. He has the same tools on him all day. I try to tell her that I didn't and that I'm a plumber working above her on 4th. I started to get annoyed, but I just remember that I need to take breaths and walk away. I start going down the stairs when she grabbed the back of my hoodie and yanked it. I spun around like what the hell and she slammed the bag into my stomach sending me stumbling down the stairs. This was when one of her co-workers comes out because of the commotion and she starts fake crying saying I sexually harassed her and that she shoved me down the stairs in an attempt to save herself. I tried to say something getting up but the guy was on the phone with the cops already and he took her away to calm her down. I started to get so mad at this woman but my coworker came to me and said everything would be fine. This is when the biggest blessings ever occurred. My buddy loves to mess with me. He'd take videos of me working or being oblivious and he'd throw like coins at me to be funny or dump water on me just as a joke to lighten the day up a bit. Well, he recorded the interaction and the lady never knew he was there. By the time he made sure I was alright, the cops were there about 10 minutes after the whole thing went down. They talk to the woman and they take her side of things at first. They start questioning me in the stairwell and my buddy said he witnessed it and had a video. He began to show the video to the cop of literally everything, from the moment I began down the stairs and past this lady to her shoving me down the stairs. He talks to her and from the second he said there was a video, she turned ghost white. They took her downstairs to the cruiser and the cop came back to me asking if I needed assistance or ambulance as I had a gash on my elbow when I stumbled down, but I was totally fine though, just in complete shock. He also asked if I wanted to press charges, and I said I would. In the following time since this happened, I've taken her to court. She's been charged and is serving time for assault and battery, and another thing I don't recall. What's important to know, as I'm realizing now, is that there were no cameras in the stairwell. I would have been screwed, absolutely screwed. It was a huge reality check for myself. I could be sitting in jail, serving time for something I didn't do at this very moment. It could have ruined my life to be quite honest. Luckily, my buddy was there and ever since then I have never complained once about him messing around with me. Shortly after this, the building installed new cameras everywhere. Being 5 months later, my parents have been awesome and teaching me about all this stuff. Especially since I'm a man and it can get scary with accusations like that. They believed me and I've always been raised by them to treat women right and I'm the kid who wouldn't hurt a fly. Wow, stories like these are truly scary in the sense that you could actually literally just by claiming something fake can ruin somebody's life. And that sort of behavior just makes it so much harder for actual victims of assault. 
I understand that this is a very, very difficult topic to, to, to discuss about, but I'd love to get your opinions on the comments. How do you go about this? Thinking in terms of equality, I believe that both men and women are capable of being gross, horrible people. Of course, hopefully not the entirety of the global population, but all genders can be assholes. So what do you think? Just go ahead and write it down in the comment section. What do you think is the best way to approach this? How would you go about it? So on that note, let's move on to the next story. There is this particular and very big toy store I used to go to because it has lots of plastic models and RC kits. Plus, it was on the way of a regular client for a certain project of my company, so after the meetings I used to go and take a look. This particular time, a bit after 5pm, I'm checking some models and a sweet old lady comes asking if I can recommend a toy for her grandkid. I'm all in for things that stimulate creativity and help her choose a wooden model kit of a train that she loves. Then back to check some gunpla. I'm checking some boxes when I have a rather hard tap on my shoulder. Karen makes her entrance in her Karen fashion. Hey, I need some help. I need to find something for my daughter. I look at her. She's like a showcase of evidently fake glasses, watch, purse and hair color. By her hand is a girl, a little girl, maybe nine. I'm terrible with kids' ages, who looks a bit uncomfortable with the situation. I try to answer, I don't. She snaps back without allowing me to finish. Do your job instead of giving excuses. My time is valuable. You were helping that old woman just before. Note, this was in Spanish and she used a fairly rude form of old woman. I could have fought back, but the girl was looking really uncomfortable with the situation. I decide to play along for her. I squat to the level of the girl. Hi, my name is OP. You want me to help you find a toy especially for you? The little girl nods, yes. Karen intervenes. I want you to find her a good doll or something. I take the nod and ask little girl. You want a doll? Or maybe things to build big rockets and fast cars? Her eyes widen a lot at those two words. Rockets, I like them, she says. Karen protests. What? No. She needs girls toys to play. She doesn't need boys toys. Little girl looks up with a supplicant look and I notice a hint of regret on Karen's face. Time to keep pushing. I tell the little girl, okay sweetie, give me one sec and I'll bring something for you. And remembering a bit the thing I had looked for the old lady, I pick up two boxes. One is a red Lego Technic plane, a bit on the expensive side because F Karen, and the other is a small water pressure bottle rockets kit. I came back with the boxes a bit hidden and say, okay, these are special toys for big, smart and strong girls. I present the boxes and Karen looks at me irate. These are not for her, she needs dolls. Get me a Barbie or something like that right now. Little poor Karen knew that the battle was already lost. Little girl's eyes widened as if she had found the holy grail and extended her arms for the Lego box, hugging the box with more care than any hug her mother would deserve. Karen now tries to impose herself. Why don't you listen to me? Get me a doll for the girl. Who do you think you are? And the little girl says, but I want this one, mom, please. I raise and look her in the eyes in the most menacing way I can, very mild to be honest, I'm not exactly a big guy, and say, you asked me to find a toy for her. Her opinion, not yours, is what counts. She looks at me furious. If not contained, she would have left me bald with screaming, but little girl pulled her arm and stopped her. Please, mom, I want this one. I don't want dolls. Defeated, she hubs and leaves, pulling the little girl who refuses to let the box go. On my side, I take a moment to pick me a gunpla. Hey, I felt like I deserved one. And head to the cashier. I'm just getting my shopping bag when Karen reappears, followed by the manager and says, That's him! He was rude and didn't help! Lady, the manager replies in a huge sigh, He is a client. She looks confused as I present her my shopping bag. On her side, little girl is holding her own shopping bag with the Lego plane. I just smiled at her and winked. 
She gave me a smile back that made my whole week. Now that is a story with a really happy ending. I mean, being a LEGO fan myself, I can totally understand that little girl being so happy with a LEGO Technic plane. Oh, I love those things. I really hope the girl enjoys it and Karen learns a lesson about pushing toys on her daughter. And who knows, maybe this LEGO set is the kickstart in the career of a future brilliant engineer. Alright, on that note, let's move on to the final story. This is what I get for going to the store instead of ordering groceries to be delivered. So with the corona stuff going on, I've been dutifully staying in my apartment, like a decent human being, and limiting any time I spend outside. Unfortunately, this has been hell on my partner's mental health and the depression is real. So I decided, screw it. We're both food boys and he likes cookies. There's a giant the next block over, so I get dressed, put on my sweet Disney mask, go on Etsy, the designs are wonderful, and head out to get my partner some cookies. Now, for reference, my style is hobo chic. So, sweats, sneaks, graphic tee, and a hoodie. Keep that in mind. I go into Giant and head for the cookie aisle. I'm considering if I want to do Oreos or if I want to be fancy and get Pepperidge Farm. These are the important questions of life. When an older woman who is very short asks if I can grab something for her off the top shelf, of course I say yes because she was nice enough to ask. I'm a simple guy. I hand her the item and go back to my contemplation. As I decide to get them both, I hear the ahem. <coughs> I've worked retail and I've worked food service, so I know the sound of a wild Karen when I hear one. What's up, I say. Karen says, What's up? Is that how you treat? I have zero in the way of spoons and even less patience. I cut her off, ma'am, ma'am. I'm going to need you to look at me and try that line of thinking again. Who the f She replies, to which I say, hey, 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 uh-uh. Let me tell you what we're not going to do. I need you to woo, woo, woo and chill. I know you know better. Karen still looks mad but doesn't say anything. So I say, now, I can help you find an employee if you want, but what you will not do is yell at me. I am only here to get cookies. I point at my stomach, I'm a thick boy, and say, not that I need them. Karen cracks a small smile, gotcha! I continue, but at this point, I'm committed to this. I didn't choose the thick life, it chose me. Karen starts to crack and laughs a little before all of a sudden starting to tear up. I'm 6 feet, 300 pounds and black. A crying Karen is a bit detrimental to my continued freedom. I say, um, you okay? Karen responds, Yeah, it's just that it's the first time I've laughed in a while. My husband is in the hospital. The virus? Yeah. I'm not sure if it means much coming from some cookie guy, but I hope he recovers. Karen smiled and walked away. While she didn't apologize for popping off, I'm glad it didn't escalate further. Her husband's condition doesn't excuse what I'm sure would have been an awful tirade, but it does serve as a reminder that crap is bad for everyone. What a cool and lighthearted dude. It's, it's awesome how he diffused the, the Karen incident by, you know, putting in a little bit of humor, making her laugh. I'm sure it sucks if you have a family member who's in the hospital with the virus. This whole situation has really messed up a lot of people. And I really hope we find a vaccine soon and mass produce it to, you know, get the shots and just go back to living a normal life. Because this whole thing sucks. All right, well, let's lighten up. And again, we've reached the end of the video. I really hoped you liked this video. All stories were super different. And I think all of them leave us with a message. And having said that, I will see you guys on the next video.